Well, the best way to appreciate some of these neat new things, I think, is to take uh, uh, an actual uh, uh, prototype PC and, and take a look at, at how this might work. So I'd like to ask uh, Chad uh, Magandas uh, to come up and uh, uh, show us what some of the future PC activities will look like. Thanks, Bill. Well, first I want to assure you all that Microsoft is not starting its own branded PC. I know you've been eyeballing this over here. And uh, really, the concept PC is all about what you guys have done. All the innovation in the hardware industry, particularly in the home sector, um, and what we can do as Microsoft to integrate it better yeah, with our okay, operating good. systems and our applications. All we've done is taken a PC, stuck it in a pretty box, and included the components, your components, that enable key new roles for the PC in the home. We're also hoping to generate a little discussion in the industry, work with our OEM partners, and ensure that we can refine these concepts, improve this design, take it back to the users through focus groups and usability testing, and confirm that we've added real value and we're solving real user problems. So what do we built here? Basically, we had three weeks. So we took totally off-the-shelf components. We started with a legacy-free design, just to keep it simple. We added an RF networking card, 802.11, that enables universal plug and play, and also clever de devices like this little wireless mouse. We also threw in a uh, high-definition TV card, just because we figured for 200 bucks you couldn't find a better TV out there. <clears throat> At the top, you notice we've got an integrated video camera, integrated mic. We didn't have a chance to put an array mic in there, like what you saw on, on Bill's slides, but we really think these are where the future is going. People are going to get sick of wearing headsets very quickly, especially when it comes to speak dicta speech dictation and interactive gaming. Array makes are fantastic. And the next version, we hope to include one. On, your, on the front, you'll notice we've got a uh, combination DVD-ROM CDRW storage device, eliminating the need for floppies. In addition, in Whistler, we've added support for CDR and CDRW into the operating system, so you can drag files over to a CDR just like you would any floppy and burn them for your friends. Of course, you have USB. IEEE 1394 ports right here on the front. And you'll notice this new device right here. You've probably seen these on PCs before. Usually they've been proprietary LCD devices, indicate the machine speed. Well, we've expanded on that concept a little bit based on what we saw in the homes when people were using their PCs. In the homes, people use their PCs like they do a telephone book or a calendar or a telephone. They want instant gratification. They don't sit in front of it for hours at a time, so they usually don't have the patience to sit down at the keyboard and start typing. They want quick, easy input. While the PC is great for configuration, most of the time you're just recalling data or starting the next song in your playlist, something like that, that you don't need all that extra UI. So what we've done is introduce the concept of a hardware digital dashboard. This digital dashboard is a new HID class that we're defining and it not only supports a basic LCD display, but it supports things like a volume control here and soft buttons. And we're defining those usage tables right now. And we hope to work with the industry to improve on that. We also have, in, we also have included a notification light that lets you know when you've got outstanding messages. So let's talk a little about the basics. It's important we address the basics. And Bill kind of touched on this. First of all, it's got to be quiet. If you have this machine in your kitchen, you have this machine in your bedroom, the last thing you want to do is hear it. So our line in the sand is 30 decibels. We're trying to get our machines down to 30 decibels. We know that's aggressive. We got pretty close. We're not there yet, but we think you can do it. it needs to be fast. Not just processor speed, but startup, like Bill said. We're improving on startup, but more importantly, our new operating system for the consumer, Whistler, which is based on Windows NT, doesn't require restarts all the time. So we don't even have to shut down when we're done. We just go into hibernation, and in 10 seconds, we're back up and running from a fully powered down state. Of course, most of the time, you're not going to be fully powered down. So when you actually just put the machine to sleep, we have a proximity detector that will allow you to basically wake up as soon as you walk right back up to the machine. So I've talked a little bit about what we're doing in the hard, what we're 
supporting on the hardware side, but Whistler is more than just hardware. We're actually taking a, an operating system that was developed for business and applying it to the consumer market, which is dramatically different. We realize that what makes Windows 2000 a great professional system doesn't make it a great system for mom. And we're taking that challenge very seriously. Now, we're still in the early stages of development here, so I can't show you everything about Whistler. Um, but I can't stand up here and not show you anything. So you've already seen the, uh, the user-friendly logon screen. And I'm going to take some chances here and show you one more feature, even though this is a prototype unit and we're running pre-alpha software. As you can see, you've got an entry for every single person in the, in the family. Now, we went to users and, and found out that everyone's sharing their machines. Well, Windows 98, they didn't really support that. And in Windows 2000, there was the capability, but it was very user-friendly, unfriendly. So we made it friendly, plus we added the capability of logging off without quitting all your applications. So when you log off, your applications can still be in the background running exactly where you left them. Someone else can log on. This allows people to simultaneously use the same computer. Let me show you. So I'm going to pop right in here and go to my son's desktop. And you notice it's got his custom desktop. There's no Barney creeping in your desktop. And if any of you have three-year-olds, you know they can do a lot of damage to your desktop. So he's just running Creative Writer. It's right where he left off. If I log out, I can pop in as myself. Oh, and I have to pass, type my password. And it pops in right where I left off. Uh, yesterday I was checking the financial news. And there are some great buy opportunities right now out there. <laughs> now earlier we got the message light. You can see I have a, a message pending from my friend Manolito. And I'm going to accept his net meeting invitation here. And it's going to launch net meeting. And now I have my integrated camera. We can start a conversation live. No phone bills, everything simple. There he is. Hi, Mono. Can you hold on? I've got to finish this demo, right? So what do we see here? Um, we have a concept PC that's sexy, but it's not finished. We need your help. We have a lot of great ideas, but we need to work with the industry and particularly work with our OEM partners to make sure that we're addressing real consumer needs and take this back to the, cons the consumer as a value add. But more, of, more than that, we need to get the PC out from under the desktop and out into the home where it can be more useful. That means we have to have style as well as po power. And more importantly, the PC has to be approachable. It has to be friendly. We have to reduce a lot of the complexity of the PC that's a barrier in the home today. Basically, together, we have to create machines that just work. Thank you.